Hello and welcome to another Photoshop Elements tutorial. My name is Chucky and today I'm going to be looking at the shake reduction feature in the new Photoshop Elements 14. Now I took this picture at Tour de Corgi in Fort Collins, Colorado and although it looks like it's a pretty good photo, if I zoom in and hit the command or the control plus on a PC, if you zoom in you can see that it's just a little bit soft. So I'm going to use the new shake reduction feature in Photoshop Elements 14 to see if we can save this photo. Let me zoom back out using the command or control zero. And then I'm going to make two new layers in my layer palette because I want to show you what the automatic and the manual can do. So I'm going to use the command J or the control J on a PC to make two new layers of this image. Then on the top layer, we're going to go to enhance and we're going to use the auto shake reduction feature. It's going to take a few seconds and then there we have it. Now it looks okay I guess. It looks like it is really sharpened or overly sharpened and doesn't look extremely good. So I'm going to turn the visibility of that layer off, go to the layer underneath it, and now we're going to try the manual method using just the shake reduction under the enhance. Now on this one, the box forms around where it thinks that the movement is at. You can grab the center dot and move it around somebody's face if you want somebody's face to be in focus. And then it does a fairly decent job of selecting where it is that you want to sharpen. Now I think it's just a little bit too much over sharpening or over correction. So I'm going to move this sensitivity down, the slider down to the left just a little bit to make it a little bit more believable. And there we go, I kind of like that one. You can see the before and after by clicking on this one right here. There's the soft before, and then there's a little bit sharpened after. I'm gonna select OK. Now I like this, out of the two, I'm gonna take the visibility and turn that back on. This is the automatic. I don't really like that, that looks pretty false. So I'm going to turn that back off again. And then we have this layer right here. Now if I zoom in and use the Command Plus or the Control Plus on a PC, you can see that it still really isn't in focus. It gives us a little bit more what looks like sharpening. So I'm going to go back down to Command Zero. Now there is a way that we can fix that. You really want the eyes in focus. You don't really care as much about everything else, but as long as the eyes are in focus, when you have a shallow depth of field like this, people will forgive you. So I'm going to create a layer mask by going to the top in my layers palette and click on layer mask. Now what that's going to do is it's going to create a white layer mask, meaning that to keep all of my information that I just used on this layer. I'm going to hit command Z to get rid of that and show you that there is another way to do this to make all of your enhancements go away and then you can paint them back in. If you hold down the Alt or the Option key on a Mac and then you click on your layer mask right there, it creates a black layer mask, meaning that there is nothing that's applied to that layer. If we use a paintbrush, right over here our paintbrush, and select white, and then pick a size that's fairly large. Um, you want to make something to where you can paint the eye back in. Uh, if you have something else that maybe is a tree or something, you can select whatever size that you want to paint with. But if you go over here to the brush settings, we do want to make sure that the hardness is set at zero. We don't want a real sharp line on there. So let's get rid of this. I'm going to zoom in a little bit by going to the Command Plus. One more time with another Command Plus to zoom in. Now we can use the space bar to move this around to kind of center this up so I can paint in with the eyes and show you the sharpening of the eyes. Now I have all my brush settings set so I'm going to start to paint right in here where the eye is at. Now because this is set at about a 9 opacity right here you can have yours more but I kind of like to have mine a little bit smaller so I can keep painting in a little bit more and more until I like what I see. Now get both eyes right here and let's see if we can sharpen these eyes. Now it's never really going to be back into focus again. That's pretty hard to do even with all the great algorithms that are out there. It is pretty hard to get something back into focus if it was shot blurry. So I'm going to keep painting right in here and see what we have right there. Oop. 
All right, let's see. Now zoomed in, it's never really gonna look that great. So I'm gonna zoom it out in just a minute and see how this looks right here. So if I go to Command-0, you can see, yeah, it looks just a little bit false. So we can go over here to our opacity and we can take down this a little bit and then keep going until it just looks like it's a little bit more into focus. Now if I toggle the visibility layer right here, you can see that it's a very subtle difference of trying to bring the eyes back into focus. So what is my grade on the new shake reduction? Well, if it is an object and the object is moving, I don't think it's going to work that well. In one of my next tutorials, I will take a picture that I have tried to hand hold at a slower shutter speed and see if this shake reduction can fix that. But as far as objects that are moving, I would probably give this a no. It's not going to work for you. If it's blurry, you're probably not going to be able to save it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on shake reduction and kind of a review of the feature in Photoshop Elements 14. You can always leave a message under my YouTube video or you can email me at info at simplyawesomephotography.com. Cheers!